Good evening. The time is 6.48, and I'll now call this public hearing to order. I'm going to read the legal notice that was posted in uh, online, as well as in the River East. Pursuant to Section 503I of the Portland Town Charter, a public hearing will be held by the Board of Selectmen on Wednesday, April 19, 2023, at 6.45 p.m. in the Buck Foreman Community Room, 265 Main Street, Portland, Connecticut, to provide residents the opportunity to comment both orally and in writing on the proposed 2023 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act program available to interested nonprofit organizations in Portland. Dated this sixth day of April, 2023, attested Ryan J. Curley, first selectman. Now this is for us to be able to participate in any nonprofit in town to be able to participate. So. Uh, this is a requirement, and as we did last year, if you recall, and I believe the year before. So with that, I'll open it up to public discussion. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to comment? I don't see anyone on Zoom. No. Give it a minute. See no comment. We can. Cl I will close the public hearing at 6:50 p.m. And our regular board of selectmen meeting will begin at 7 p.m. So in 10 minutes. Thank you all. Recording stopped. Are you going to talk to GCA Junior General Counsel?
Oh, you too. Yeah, I know. Here's some. <laughs> Good evening. The time is 7 p.m. and I'll now call this regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on tonight's agenda is the approval of minutes. Now we have a budget workshop minutes from March 21st, 2023. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. And I'll second that motion. Thank you both. Any errors, changes, or omissions? Are they around the money? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? And the abstention. Okay. The next item is a regular Board of Selectmen meeting on March 15th, 2023. Can you review those minutes as well? Yes. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve those. I'll second that. Thank you both. Uh, any errors, changes, or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carried. Then we also have a budget workshop on March 15, 2023. I'll make a motion. We accept those minutes as read. I'll oh, second. Okay. I'll second that motion. Thank you both. <laughs> Any errors, changes, or omissions? Seeing none. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. And lastly, there was a regular Board of Selectmen meeting on April 5th, 2023. I'll make a motion on those. I'll second that. Both. Any errors, changes, or omissions? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. The next uh, item is the acceptance of tonight's agenda. I have no changes, so I'll entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Thank you, John. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Sean. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. <coughs> I do have, for a court of communications and correspondence, I have, and if I, I might have to, I don't know where I put my notes, so I might have to read it under status and committee reports. But um, there is a, there's a grant opportunity that I, I want to read and go into a little bit later through the uh, Middlesex Chamber of Commerce. It's the Middlesex County Revitalization Committee, and there's a, a grant opportunity for businesses in Middlesex County that goes live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And so I just want to touch upon that. I'll read that when I, when I get that note. But that's all I have under communications and correspondence. So we can move on to public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to comment during public comment? Is there anyone in the chat <coughs> All right, seeing none, we can move on to old business. <coughs> Liz Habino is here with the Committee on Solidarity for the monthly report. How you doing, Liz? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, so our monthly report, um, you may have heard from Hope in the past, we have a three-month rotating chair agreement right now on our solidarity committee so i am the new chair for the um the next three months of um, april May, and june and um we have well, we heard that we have a new member that was um i believe um approved by the board of selectmen tina so thank you for um approving tina's nomination and i know she was planning to get sworn in. I'm not sure if that happened yet, but she attended our meeting as a member of the public, um, our last meeting. She hadn't been sworn in yet. So we're excited to keep expanding our committee. Um, we're working hard on planning Juneteenth. We have a subcommittee working on that coordinating with other groups in town. And I know that's coming up on the agenda as well today. Um, we have the research brochure, the um, sorry, the resource brochure that Hope worked and other members worked hard on, and um, so uh, the town is going to be helping us to print that. So thank you for that as well. Um, so that's an updated research uh, 
resource for sure. Very um, local and regional resources. And um, we have the town, the solidarity banners that were um, created last year, and they were up um, last year through the month of June um, on Main Street, representing different minority groups and um, protected classes. And um, we're planning to have those up again. So we had um, one of our members, PJ, was in touch with uh, Public Works about having those set up again for the, um, the month of June. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and then we're just working on um, some, looking back at the surveys that have been done in the past from the, the task force and the Committee on Solidarity. And um, looking at different areas that we can, um, you know, that folks in the community had expressed that they were, um, you know, areas that the town can work on in terms of um, improving solidarity in the town and um, coming together more. So we're looking at different areas and I know that one that we definitely want to work on is um, enhancing the relationship between the committee and the police department and the community and the police department. So we're going to be reaching out to invite the police department to our Juneteenth event um, and just seeing if um, folks want to come back. Um, we used to, when, this, when the Solidarity Committee was a task force, um, you, we had the police department coming to meetings and youth services and the board of ed. And um, now some of those people are still coming, but it's not official anymore. And, um, so we'd like to kind of do some invitations to all of those folks to you know, make sure they still know about our meetings and they're still welcome and hopefully keep working together. So I think that's it, mostly it for the FC. Unless anyone has questions. Uh, Liz, I, Mike Hernandez, I have one question for you about the Juneteenth event. Um, so later on in the on the agenda, <coughs> we're gonna be. I'm gonna make a motion to transfer monies to you, to your committee. Um, I had one question about the food truck. What what is the obligation of the food truck? Like that you have a contract with them. How does that work? So we don't have a signed contract yet. Um, the the plan was the food truck that we want to work with. Um, they agreed to come. So we wanted to have this year, we really, our priority was to have um, a black owned food truck. Um, and there's several in Middletown and we reach out to every, all the ones that we do. And, um, everyone was already booked pretty much, but we were able to find one in Manchester. And um, he's, you know, he's excited and he's willing to come, but he needed to, for it to um, make sense for him to come down for the day for his business. He needs to have um, a minimum of, you know, food that he sells, so a thousand dollar minimum. So we wanted to be able to guarantee that he would be able to make a thousand dollars. So he'd be vending food. We, we wouldn't be planning to pay him up front. But we just wanted to make sure that he can make that one thousand dollar minimum. So we kind of just wanted to guarantee that. So I guess my question is, if he has sales of like eight hundred, we only owe him two hundred, or how's that work? Right. That's what it, how it works. Okay. Yeah. So he, we would just pay the difference of whatever um, isn't you know sold up to that thousand dollar minimum. Okay. Thank you for answering the question. Appreciate it. Thank you for asking. Any other questions for Liz about the Solidarity Committee or Juneteenth, which is coming up quick? I can talk more about that too. I just, mm -hmm. I didn't know if you wanted me to talk about it more when it comes on the agenda yeah, or. Well, yeah, Liz, why don't we do that? Because we're going to be uh, talking about that under item <coughs> D under new business. So we can uh, we can talk more then if that's okay. okay. Does anybody have any other questions though? Or? No. no. Okay. Well, thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Um, all right. Next up is the resolution. Now, this is the resolution <coughs> on the 2023 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act program. It's not in your in your packet, uh, but it is here. Th it was in your packet at the last meeting, you recall. We didn't yeah. read it, but I don't know if somebody would like to read it again. We held a, a public hearing. Ralph, would you mind reading it? If it's mm -hmm. here. Okay. Yeah, if you want to read the resolution. Sure. Thank you. 
Resolution of the <coughs> following. Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, April 5th, 2023. 2023 Neighborhood Assistance Act, NAA Program Participation. Whereas the State of Connecticut Department of Revenue Services is providing the Town of Portland the opportunity to participate in the 2023 Neighborhood Assistance Act, thus allowing interested nonprofit organizations within the municipality to submit applications and Whereas in accordance with the State of Connecticut Department of Revenue Services, the Board of Selectmen shall hold a public hearing on all programs and the governing body of the municipality <coughs> must vote to approve these programs. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town of Portland Board of Selectmen does hereby designate the first selectman, Ryan J. Curley, as liaison to handle all Neighborhood Assistance Act matters. There you go. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Sean. As I mentioned, we held a public hearing at 645 this evening, uh, meeting that requirement. So uh, any further discussion on this? Um, I just want to say, uh, because I am a member of a couple of nonprofits in town, uh, vice president and treasurers and stuff, um, I'm probably just going to abstain from the vote, and I'll abstain when we come along. Just, I don't know if it's a conflict of interest, but I don't foresee my vote really mattering, but I'm just going to abstain out of safety of the, okay. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Thanks, Mike. Um, any other comments? Or? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution, the 2023 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act program. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. Mike one, Hernandez. One abstention. Six in favor, one abstention. Uh, next up, we have appointments, reappointments to boards and commissions. Nothing. Nothing tonight. Okay. So we'll move on then to new business. Item A, this is this comes to us from the Water and Sewer Commission. This is in your packet. Now this is a request. Uh, our Public Works Director, Ryan O'Halpin, is, is also here to answer any questions that you may have, but I can kind of summarize what happened. Uh, Matt Coronella, who is the owner of Portland Laundry Mat, which is located on Route 66, uh, he had a, a water leak in a, in a pipe on his property, and that water leak resulted in a significant loss of, of water into, into the ground. Now, he is he's asking, because it was a very large leak, He's not asking to to be compensated or to be uh, to not have to pay the water bill, but he is saying because that water went into the ground and not into uh, the drain, uh, that he's asking for relief from the sewer portion of that of that. So, uh, as you know, uh, the the Water and Sewer Commission can uh, this this request the the. The requested relief amount is uh, $1,985, which is a, it's a you know, not a small amount, and it's over the threshold that the Water and Sewer Commission can, um, <coughs> can advise on or, or relieve. So that's why it comes before the board. This is the body that uh, oversees all of the, of the water and sewer in the town. And so, um, like I said, Ryan is here to answer any questions. Uh, but that is um, what happened. I, I don't know if it's in your packet. I do have some pictures that were in my packet. My ink was running out, but okay. I've got them too if anybody wants to see them. Looks like it was under the floor. Yeah, right. And I think the, the floor, big question that was asked at the, the commission was, tiles. you know, the first before they, you know, was looking to see, you know, what happened, where did the water go? And he said clearly, and I think the picture show is that mm. it just went into the ground. It wasn't going into the system where there was, you know, it was getting <coughs> from the sewer. So that's that's probably the, obviously the biggest question with regards to that was addressed. And that 1985, as well as the associated interest as well on that, because while while this has been uh, being looked at by the by Public Works, the Water and Sewer Commission. That bill has been accruing interest, so um, it would be it would be an addition to that interest as well as in 1985. So, um, I 
No, no, open it up to discussion. Yeah. I have I have one question. When we he came before the before us, yeah, if he can uh, When he came before the Water and Sewer Commission, one thing they wanted to do was because of, to make sure we checked the usage going into the, the next billing cycle because of when it was repaired. Does that reflect? So he had shut the water off early into in this billing cycle. I don't believe he's going to ask for more. Uh, we did bring that up in the meeting and I forget the exact date that he shut it off, but it was, I think it was early enough in the next billing cycle that he caught it, that it shouldn't be an issue. But I did not check to see what his bill was this past um, billing cycle. So you believe this is the final number that he's Correct, yeah, at. That's, that's what he had stated at the last meeting. So he came in on the February 13th meeting right. to originally bring this up, and then he was back again on the March 13th meeting um, after he had the plumber in there, found the leak, because that's what we advised him to do. You need to prove where this leak was. The plumber needs to write up something on it to the uh, commission. Yeah, and that was, that was the meeting, the March meeting, where yeah. this number was discussed. Yep. I should add well, uh, that the Water and Sewer Commission did uh, make a motion to recommend to the Board of Selectmen uh, the approval of the, the of the requested relief. Was that motion unanimous? Yes. Yeah, yeah it was. Yes. <clears throat> I, I personally don't see a, a problem with this. The only question I had was the one that you asked, Sean. You know, and as long as this is the bill, the bill is the bill. Right. I don't see a problem with that. I mean, the good Lord, that that laundromat's been there as a laundromat since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So God only knows how long that pipe has been there. But uh, it it's all gone into the ground. It's not impacted our sewers. I I agree with the Water and Sewer Commission. I don't have a problem. With it. Yeah, unfortunately, he's, he's working his way through. And laundromat having to repair and fix a number of things. Yeah. Uh, we've had a couple of conversations, so he's been challenged, but he's been working hard to improve it. So it's, it's tough because his <laughs> business is water. Really. Yeah, <laughs> right. I have no problem with it because it's, it's purely ac accidental and unintentional. Um, I'm just concerned a little bit because I know. Uh, if, will this open the door to anybody else? Because I believe Mr. Jarzebek on Summer Street asked for a credit because he has a sprinkler system, but his is intentional. He knows what he's doing. I don't know if that affects the same person as a, a metered water sprinkler system. They don't use a drain going back, neither it goes back into the ground. This is a different situation completely, but now do these people have an argument? So he didn't pay for it. Why do I have to pay for it? That's. I just don't want to open the door for anybody else with sprinkler systems. I, I do have similar concerns because there are other reports of leaks in houses and people get high water bills and um, it could be it could be a problem mm -hmm. down the road. But are the, is that the same issue or are you talking about uh, this is it disputing what he owes in water? He's just disputing the sewer piece. Sorry. Correct. Yeah. Um, no, there's no nothing specific, um, but I know it, it could it could be something people refer to and start emailing uh, myself or this could be um, precedent setting is what you're saying correct mm -hmm. is it could be yes and as long as it's followed the same way I mean we know everyone that has a sprinkler system knows you're you're paying additional right um, and that's something that wants to be changed that's something way way down the road but I think with this if you have a leak it's a different situation it's, a different right. situation. it's accidental or unintentional right. where a sprinkler system it's when you bought it you're you, knowing what's going right, on which, you know. I don't know if we should have that in any kind of wording or if it already is that like, if you have a sprinkler system you don't get the same benefit but I'm just worried about opening the door but 
with this particular problem, I'm okay with right. giving the, the credit. Whatever. Yeah, the, I think people would have to prove they had a leak. Um, they would have to do the same thing that he did, get the plumber, um, explain why it wasn't caught early. Um, his being the pipe was underneath the floor. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're not going to see that leak until you see the bill. You're not going to know. Um, if someone's, you know, n just n neglecting their basement, um, I don't think they should get the same treatment. But I don't know. Um, I don't know if there, th there's a gray area, right. obviously, mm -hmm. there. Well, um, I think it's, and you have these with certain decisions that, you have to t take each case as it comes it before comes. the Water and Sewer Commission and as their recommendations come before our board and how we're going to handle it. Correct. Uh, I think here, the irrigation system strong. I mean, people have the option. Okay, they can put a separate meter in. No. Okay. No. Nope. Yeah. That's, that's not correct. That's not true. People can't put a second meter in. And no, we didn't reach that. No. Yeah. Okay. Dave, this is just okay, sorry. Um, so I just want to say that another point to this is the you know the size of this. Whereas a residential house would not have what what this plumber says in your in your packet was this was the equivalent to a mainline break uh, because because of the laundromat's uh, use for this. Right. So. I don't, I don't foresee this, this being, you know, an issue. Certainly, any recommendations would come before the Water and Sewer Commission and then to this body. So, uh, ultimately, the, the Board of Selectmen ha does have final say over Water and Sewer matters. But so what is the limit that Water and Sewer Commission can forgive? $200. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we follow the Water and Sewer Commission's recommendation and uh, um, is it a reimbursement? A relief of a, re a relief to the portion, the sewer portion of Mr. Cornella's bill of 1985. And associated interest. A second. Thank you. Well, any further discussion on this? Could I propose an amendment to that statement? <clears throat> I'm wondering if we should just include in there that we, we're proposing this based upon the evidence provided, including the evidence that was submitted by a plumber that was hired by the individual. Because I think that may separate this out even more. I mean, he had a professional come in and, and do this. Can't hurt. So, would you like to amend your motion? To um. but just what, what you said, Sean, I'm just saying that we also just add that he also provided documentation he, from, uh, a, Ms. from a this, plumber. Uh, yeah. Um, based on the documentation. Based on, based on, on the documentation, documentation presented by... Um, Cameron? The Cameron Derek Drazowitz, owner of Cameron Plumbing and Heating Mechanical Contractors, LLC, which was uh, supplied or substantiated the lease. Which was supplied, which, uh, which documented, which, is, the, which documented the leak, the leak yeah. was below the floor, and he, um, gave substantiating uh, pictures to document the leak, okay. however you want to word that. So, motion made. Mike, you still second? I do. Uh, so I think the purpose of that was just to document that not only did the Water and Sewer Commission recommend this, but there was also substantial evidence that supported the, the leakage um, from a licensed plumber as well. That was that was my intention. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> further discussion. 
seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Which is carried. Thank you, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, hold on, Ryan, let me see. Are you? Yeah, you're next. You're next, so <laughs> don't go too far. <laughs> The next up, actually, is the adoption of the water and sewer budgets for uh, the fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Does that make a motion to discuss? What's that? Yes. Want me to make a motion sure. to discuss? Sure. Okay. Um, Resolution Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, April 19, 2023. Adoption of the water and sewer budgets for the 23-24 fiscal year. Resolved that the water and sewer budgets for the fiscal year 2023 and 2024 as outlined on the attached in the amount of 1,702,697 in the water budget and $1,246,925 in the sewer budget be and, and are hereby adopted. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Paul. All right, discussion on the water and sewer. Budgets. Hey, the only thing I would, you know, I wanted to just point out with regards to these budgets is um, due to the work that we had done several years ago with our subcommittee that we had for water and sewer, the selectman subcommittee, along with the water and sewer commission, the rate adjustments that we made several years ago in conjunction with what has transpired because of COVID and what has happened at NBC. It's really good to see that we've made major progress in reducing the debt that we have in those two areas. So um, we, it came to light, obviously, when we got the audit report the last meeting, but we made really good inroads in reducing that debt. So I just thought I'd point that out. It's really important. And you're absolutely right. You're seeing that audit report, we're, we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. We, we, you know, we're in a little bit of a hole and we're, we're slowly getting out of it. So, uh, and that is due to the work of that, of that subcommittee and the uh, you know, water sewer commission. So, it's good. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments or discussion? And when, I believe it's been now two years since it was been late in the years? Two years, yeah. Two years. <coughs> all right. We'll see none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right. The next item I see under new business is a resolution. This is a, a request for a waiver of bid, and this is Fleet Pump and Service Group, LLC. Let me. Uh, Ryan is here again on this. Ryan, do you want to tell us a little bit about this? Sure. Um, this is at the Riverview pump station. Um, obviously, I was here last time about the COAV pump station pump replacements, or those were rebuilds. Um, on this one, one of the pumps failed. We did have a spare pump that we put in back in January, and it was noticed that the second pump is in the process of failing. And instead of waiting, uh, we'd like to get out ahead and replace that pump prior to it failing. So over there, there's a rail system. The, the pumps aren't in a, a dry well, uh, similar to the COAB pump station. So there's a rail system to drop the pump, lower the pump down, and the receiver on it is already set down there and the electrical is all set up. So the infrastructure is set up for the same pump to go down there. And the infrastructure is good. It's uh, 1999. So, and they do make the same pump brand new. It's not a rebuild um, at this point. So I think it's a, a good option to put a brand new pump down there. We got two new pumps then. And um, yeah, it'd lighten the worry of anything so, happening so Ryan, over there. So Ryan, you said that the that, that the the assembly, the infrastructure was installed about 20 years ago or so. Correct. What's the life expectancy? Is that does that wear as as much as anything else, or is that good to go for a while? It's it's good. Yeah, I mean, you're talking a receiver on a on a pipe, and then the rail system to lower it, and then electrical wiring. So that that should be good. 
for a long time to come. It'll have to be looked at most likely in 20 years when these pumps are reaching their life expectancy to see if it needs to be a bigger project similar to what we're about to do at Coab Pump Station. What but until you, what, then, what I think we're... What do you estimate, uh, by just going with this pump and leaving that other infrastructure in place, what do you estimate that I would say, us? yeah, we got, we got roughly 20, 25 years out of these pumps. I expect the same. <laughs> Resolution Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, April 19th, 2023. Request for waiver and bid requirements. Fleet Pump and Service Group Incorporated. Whereas the Town of Portland Water Pollution Control Facility, <coughs> WPCF, purchased the Fleet Submersible Grinder Pump and surrounding infrastructure 24 years ago in 1999 from Fleet Pump and Service Group, Inc. to pump raw sewage at the river. Riverview Pump Station, and whereas the recently mechanical issues have identified by the WPCF personnel, and whereas a, co a quote from Fleet Pump and Service Group Incorporated for replacement of the flight submersible grinder pump has been received at approximately $12,800, and whereas Fleet Pump and Service Group Incorporated is the United States East Coast dealer of the flight pumps needed to match the pump infrastructure at Riverview Pump Station. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in the best interest of the town, pursuant to Section 1208, Subsection 7 of the Portland Charter, the Board of Selectmen hereby waives the bidding requirements of Section 1208 of the Portland Charter as it pertains to use, like, utilizing Fleet Pump and Services Group Incorporated as the vendor to, to provide for the flight submersible grinder pump replacement needed at Riverview Pump Station and further be it <coughs> and, and be it further resolved that the Board of Selectmen authorizes the first electman Ryan J. Curley to act on behalf of the Town of Portland to enter into any and agreements related to these repairs improvements. I'll second that motion. Any, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you, Ryan. Ryan, I have one question. How many pump stations do we have in town? Three. Three for sewer. Um, we have Bartlett Street Pump Station for water. I believe that's it. How's the third one doing? Third one's in good shape, but. Uh, Where is the third one? I believe that Indian Hill Ave. Oh, okay. And I think the date on that one was 2006, so we're probably not going to be talking about that in the next couple of years, but something Just to keep an eye on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. All right, thank you, Ryan. All right, next item D under new business is a, a request for a transfer from contingency for the solid, a committee on solidarity for the purpose of Juneteenth. Now, uh, Liz is back here with us. I, I do want to mention that uh, in the past, I, I believe it was maybe three years now. I can't remember how many years. Like uh, this will be the third year. What? Yeah. Third in year. the past, we've uh, we've transferred a thousand dollars from contingency for uh, for the uh, event of Juneteenth to, to help you know so you know celebrate that. And this year, because of that that food truck obligation, uh, as well as some other expenses, the request is. To transfer up to two thousand uh, dollars, and and that way, if the food truck, which as Liz mentioned before, were to come in at that full thousand, the uh, the committee on solidarity would still be able to fund the rest of Juneteenth with that. So, um, that is a proposal that. Um, and, uh, and Liz, would that would that allow you the funds that you need for for the event?
um, that I feel comfortable to you know, be able to hire a DJ again and rent a bounce house again um, and you know, be able to have the food truck and, and know that we can cover anything that um, you know, if he doesn't make the thousand dollars, as well as you know, other costs that we have, like decorations and signs, publicity, flyers, things like that. I do want to point out that um, we did set up the committee on solidarity in our budget with a fund. So, uh, should the budget be approved, which I hope it, I hope it is on May eighth then the Committee on Solidarity will have a fund where they can receive donations on top. And so uh, anyone in town who wishes to donate for, for events such as Juneteenth would be able to donate through the town. And, and, um, but we don't have that fund yet, and that's why uh, in order to cover that for this year, I think the request is uh, you know, up to that 2000 All right, if there's no other discussion, I'd like to make a motion to transfer up to $2,000 from contingency for the Committee on Solidarity. I'll second that. All right, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, sir. We'll, we'll see you then. We're looking forward to it. Okay, yes, we'll keep you posted. All right, please do. Thank you. And what's the date again? Just so oh, it's yes. Yeah. So it's um, Saturday, June twenty fourth, at the Riverfront Park, from eleven to two. Great. Thank you, Liz. Okay. All right. Um, next up is I have two proclamations, and they're in your packets. Uh, these are, I believe, we did these proclamations last year as well. It is mm -hmm. Fair Housing Month in April as well as Autism Awareness Month. Uh, I don't know if any of the cycle would like to read the proclamations. Um, they are. I'll take them. Right? I'll read the autism one. <laughs> okay. I'll do fair housing and you can have autism. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Proclamation Fair Housing Month. Whereas April 2023 marks the 55th anniversary of Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, known as the Civil Rights Fair Housing Act, and whereas this act provides equal housing opportunity for all Americans, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, as well as to ensure fair practice in the sale, rental, or financing of property. And whereas the Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988 added new rights, remedies, monetary penalties, and strengthened its enforcement procedures. And whereas the Fair Housing Amendments Act seeks to provide equal housing opportunities to affirmatively further housing choices, to eliminate legal barriers to equal housing and to emphasize equal housing as a fundamental human right for all. And whereas recipients of funds from the town must carry out an affirmative marketing program to attract prospective buyers or tenants of all majority and minority groups without consideration of race, color, religion, sex, disability, age, gender, gender identity, familial status, or national origin and whereas the town of Portland, Connecticut fully supports the intent and purpose of the fair, Federal Fair Housing Act, local fair housing laws, and follows policies and practices in order to achieve its goal. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Ryan J. Curley, first selectman of the town of Portland, Connecticut, to hereby proclaim the month of April 2023 as Fair Housing Month. In witness whereof, I do hereby set my hand and cause the seal of Portland to be affixed to this 19th day of April in the year 2023 by Ryan J. Curley, First Selectman, Town of Portland, Connecticut, uh, Portland Board of Selectmen, John H. Dillon, Michael S. Hernandez, Robert W. Hetrick, Jr., Sean P. Manning, Michael A. Peltman, and Ralph R. Zampano. Thank you, John. Michael? Proclamation Autism Awareness Month, whereas autism is a pervasive developmental disorder affecting the social communication and behavioral skill of those affected by it, and whereas more than 5 million Americans live with autism. However, there has been significant progress made in improving access to opportunities for people with developmental disabilities in recent years. And whereas there are still many barriers people with autism face in their daily lives, in order to improve quality of life for people with autism and their families, the government is committed to funding research to better understand, improve methods for early identification and diagnosis, and innovative services to treat autism. And whereas, while educational and social programs are vital to improving opportunities 
to those with autism. There are organizations advocating the expansion of programs beyond school years to provide attention, care, and support, the well and support the well-being for those with autism throughout their lives. And whereas during the month of April, citizens can take the pledge to create a world where people with autism can reach the full potential by increasing understanding and acceptance, along with encouraging inclusive employment, living, and social environment. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Ryan J. Curley, first selectman for the town of Portland, Connecticut, hereby proclaims the month of April as Autism Awareness Month in the town of Portland, Connecticut, and urges all citizens to, all citizens to become more aware of autism and encourage acceptance and understanding and inclusion with daily acts of kindness in our community. In witness, therefore, I do hereby set my, set my hand and cause the seal of Portland to be affixed this 19th day of April in the year 2023 by Ryan J. Curley, First Selectman Town of Portland, Board of Selectman Members John H. Dillon, Michael S. Hernandez, Robert W. Hattrick Jr., Sean P. Manning, Michael A. Pelton, and Ralph R. Zampano. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Two important proclamations. <clears throat> Next up, under new business, is item F, refunds of excess payments. Uh, make a motion for a refund of excess payment for Earl F. Capuano, Jr., for $48.05. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstention? Motion carries. Yeah, flight to that. Thank you. <laughs> only, only one. Uh, <laughs> So with that, we can move on to item nine, which is status and committee reports. I did uh, find that letter. I do want to read from the Middlesex County Revitalization Commission. So I just want to read that now, and we'll be we'll be announcing this more tomorrow, trying to get the word out to Portland businesses because this is certainly an economic development uh, initiative that we're hoping some Portland businesses apply for, and, and we do anticipate there is a, a lot of interest in these grants. Mm -hmm. but uh, this is from the MCRC. It's a business operating grants program for 2023, and applications are now being accepted for the 2023 Middlesex County Revitalization Commission, or MCRC's, business operating grant program. The program is funded through the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development and offers grants of up to $25,000 to qualified small businesses in Middlesex County, Connecticut. The 2023 application window is April 20th to May 19th. Mm -hmm. And this is the first of five years of the program and it's designed to provide financial and technical assistance to business owners so that they can continue operations and maintain and grow employment opportunities for Middlesex County residents. The grants may be used for equipment purchases, investments in new technology, leasehold improvements, marketing investments, and to mitigate negative effects of anticipated and unanticipated increases, uh, unanticipated increases in operating costs, as well as business interruptions from road and infrastructure projects in Middlesex County, such as the Adam and East Adam Swing Bridge reconstruction project, uh, businesses that apply must be based in and have operated in a Middlesex County town for at least 24 months, have no more than 50 employees, and be in good standing with all municipal, state, and federal authorities. A full list of eligibility and application requirements can be found on the Commission's website, https uh, backslash, backslash mxcrc.org. Um, and that is, that's basically it. So I am on the, I'm actually the chair of the, the MCRC uh, commission. And we've been, we've been working on this, getting this grant opportunity out for, uh, for the past year or so. And it's, it's a really good opportunity. They, we get, uh, the MCRC is getting from DECD $200,000 a year for the next five years. So $1 million uh, will be going in, in grants to businesses in Middlesex County. So each year, uh, most likely, there'll be eight recipients and of uh, $25,000. And we're certainly hoping that uh, we encourage all Portland businesses that are interested to apply uh, for these for these grants. And if there's going to be a lot of interest with this, so if, if you don't get it this year, you know, you can always apply again for, uh, for next year as well and the following years. 
And so this goes live at 8 a.m. tomorrow. So uh, if you go to the MCRC website right now, I don't think it's full, it's up yet. So at 8 a.m. tomorrow, you can read all the details. But I did want to mention that because uh, that's a big thing. For and how are you promoting it, Ryan? Are you putting it on the town's website? We're going to get it on the website. Yeah, they, um, uh, the chamber just sent out a uh, press release and all sorts of images and, and whatnot this, this evening. So we just got to get that on. I'm gonna, you know. So the bit local businesses will be getting, have an opportunity to get this from any number of sources, this information. Yeah, I, we're trying to get yeah. it out as, as yeah. broadly. This is the first, I, I haven't talked about it publicly because yeah. we didn't know when the funding was going to come in from the state in order to, uh, to start. Yeah. So now that we've received the funding, we've vetted the questions, we've done all the, all the work, that now this, this program is, is up. And there's only a one month window to apply. And we're hoping to be able to award the first round by August 1st. Yeah. So, Good deal. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the next thing I want to talk about, and, and Ralph reminded me before the meeting, was just an update with GZA on the water. So I just want to let you know I received an email from Rich DeRosier. Ryan, Ryan and I received an email today that uh, May 22nd is slated for the start of the test uh, well drilling period. So they have booked May 22nd to May 31st, and we're working, it looks like we're going to be doing two wells right now, uh, and then we're gonna look at the budget as far as the third well goes, but um, you know, we're working out the details, but stay tuned. It's good to see that this is just a, a month away at this point, so more, more news to come on that. GZA is on site tomorrow. They're gonna do some more geophysical work at all three of the properties that they're interested in. So we'll, uh, we'll know more next time, but uh, thank you. I think that's that's it, that's all I got. Unless, are you gonna talk about the, the EDC? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, um, with regards to my items, um, first one, Park and Rec canceled their meeting, but the one thing to note with, um, with regards to Park and Rec is that the water was turned on at the new com park complex. So, um, that's good from the standpoint of if we continue to get hot weather and we have to ir ir irrigate, but it also means that the uh, bathrooms are up and available and we're all set for come Memorial Day to turn on the uh, splash pad. So uh, that's what we have for Park and Rec. With regards to uh, EDC, um, the biggest thing that came out of the meeting last week was that uh, the Garden Club had come to the meeting and uh, they, are doing a partnership with EDC, and um, what they're going to do is um, acknowledge someone in someone with the businesses in town. For now, it's just Main Street, but to acknowledge a business in town that did something in terms of plantings to beautify their property. Um, they're actually going around on Saturday, I believe, to pass out any literature to the businesses, so they'll know the have the form to to, to put in for it have the rules on how it's gonna be handled. So um, that was a, a good thing that came out of that meeting. Um, and then the last one would have been water and sewer, but actually we, we talked about GZA, we talked about the problem that w the laundromat had, and we also talked about the pump that we had to look to replace. So kind of covered all of the water and sewer items that I had. <laughs> but that's it. Thanks, Ralph. Any other status and committee reports? And we'll move on to item 10, which is public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to comment? Is there anyone in the chat? Okay. Uh, next is Board of Selectmen general and formal discussion. Uh, anyone have anything to see? I just want to uh, remind all the members of the board, next Saturday the 29th, we are having our, uh, it's the 11th year of the Kenny Fletcher Memorial Car Show. And um, last year we raised $13,500 that we gave out to different organizations in town. Portland F Food Bank, uh, the VFW, um, what was the one? Project graduation, that was another good one, so. Vocal cords? Vocal cords, uh, the uh, hot Middlesex Hospice. 
there's a few of them. So we're hoping that we have good weather again and we're able to uh, raise that amount or a little more. So it's a good time. Everybody should come out. Plenty of food, nice cars. It's like old home day. See people you haven't seen in a while. So something for you to do on a Saturday. Looking forward to it. <clears throat> it's just, uh, it's nice that that's continued. I mean, I, like, like I'm sure you, Sean, I grew up with Kenny too. Yeah. And if, if there was the nicest guy in the world, Kenny was one of them. You know, there, he, he was just a, a really great human being, and it's just a, a shame that he's not with us now. But at, at the car show, it's, it's great that his legacy lives on. And kudos to you guys that do a lot with it. Any, anything else? Um, no informal discussion? Um, just one comment. Every time I go past Brainerd, they're adding more and building it up more. It's nice to see that first building mm. starting to put the foundation up and some of the first walls. So, pick your parking place now. Pick your parking place now, exactly. Mm. <laughs> They're moving. They yeah, we're too bad. Bad. <laughs> Something else. Bobby, you got anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else have anything? Hey, Brian, if you want, we uh, make people aware we put up the scam alert on the website. Oh, that is right. Is that on the website? It's on the website now. So there was, just to put in the record, there is a scam that's uh, online. I think it was on the, the Portland Community Facebook page. And uh, it is, uh, the police department put out a, a statement about that today that, uh, I'll, I'll just read that if it's right there. Uh, yep, there is a scam uh, that the Portland Police Department would like people to be aware of. Uh, and this is uh, perpetrated on Facebook. The scam is a work from home data entry payroll clerk position in return for paying off your credit card debt in the form of $20 per hour. This is not a real job opportunity. These scammers are asking people for credit card information, stating that they would pay off your credit cards in return. Uh, they are asking for people to purchase gift cards uh, they are asking for personal information and then we'll, we'll use your credit cards and open up other accounts using your identity. Please be aware of all scams and look for red flags. So that's important. It is going on, so be on the lookout and tell people mm -hmm. uh, not, to, not to fall for that. That's good, because I bet it every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I thought they were paying off my credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, under follow-up <coughs> items, I don't have anything this evening, so I'll entertain a motion to... I have one thing Okay. under the town charter, review town charter. I know we spoke about that several months ago, mm -hmm. and one of the things we spoke about was um, purchasing, the purchasing agreement mm -hmm. and the yeah. amount of money. That's something that, by reading the charter, we can discuss without a charter review committee, so I'd like to have that. Um, brought up on the on a recent uh, uh, coming future agenda. You read my mind, Sean. It's actually oh, no. our. It's on my desk. <laughs> it's okay. It's on my desk. I just I keep because it's on my desk too. I keep so. getting <laughs> sidetracked. But uh, I was talking with Tom about it, and it's it's one of those things that I think was updated. I want to say 2003 or yeah. 2005. It's been it's been a while, and, and it does need to be looked at. So. <laughs> Uh, yes, we, we need to do that, and we don't need a charter commission to do that. Right. And, and some of those some of those numbers can be updated to uh, you know make make life a little easier for for everybody. So yeah, yeah no, I, I totally agree. Okay. So I'll, I'll work on that, uh, and then on that note, I mean, there's a there's several other things that you know we're working on that you know I want to bring to the board. I still want, and I think I talked with board about it, and Ryan and I have talked about it, is, um, is when people leave things for, for free out in the yard, and uh, what happens sometimes is that couches don't get picked up, and then it rains, and then those couches stay for weeks, and, and so sometimes the public, public works crew have to take that and, and bring that to the transfer station. 
and we really need to do something to, you know, have some kind of a way to, um, to find people who need those things out for an extended period of time. Uh, that's another policy that I'd like to, uh, and I think we've talked about it before, but that's another one that's on my desk that I just keep getting sidetracked, and, you know, and um, so I think, Ryan, we can talk about that, but I just want to let you guys know that that's another one that yep. I'm working on that I don't think comes up too often. Uh, but, it, you know, every time I drive by a couch that has been, you know, there for two weeks, I'm thinking, <laughs> it's not taking the first day. Yeah. 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 On day one, you check and see if it's a good one. You know? <laughs> By day 20, it's a problem. Exactly. So uh, we'll look at other towns and see what kind of policies they have in place as well for that. Uh, any, anything else under your follow up items? See none. Is there a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Sean, is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Ralph. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Recording stopped. Uh -oh.